and shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you, Sandra and Rob, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jan. This movie was so moving. It was so emotional. It was, it, but it still kept me riveted at the same time. Uh, Sandra, beginning with you, Ruth's trauma and the things she's experienced gives her so much heaviness. When you think about the ways you've expressed that emotion in different roles, what made Ruth's trauma and depth different from, say, other ways you've had to convey that on screen? because I was very sensitive to the fact that I was playing a woman who had extreme judgment on her from the day she was born. Um, her birthright landed her in poverty. She didn't have the resources. She was invisible to society. Um, and playing a woman who has been invisible since the day that she was born is, is, um, is a lot of responsibility to that because millions upon millions of people are born into that world every day and into a system that will not see them. How do you create hope and a light, at the end of tun a light at the end of the tunnel for yourself when you don't have the benefits that I was lucky enough to be born into? So having met those women in prison and those who'd been released, and they gave me their stories and they entrusted me with the truth, um, I, I carried that um, with a lot of heavy weight because you want to show them authentically even though at the beginning of the story, we were only letting you see one side of Ruth, we were very careful as to when we started showing the cracks where you as an audience started feeling empathy and sympathy and that there was a human being. Um, and that, we wanted that to be very confusing for the audience goer because we're like, well, wait a minute, you told me she did this horrible thing. I'm supposed to only feel one way, which is in the extreme judgment that I sit in right now until we give you the full story. Rob, for, for you, for your character, Cross, I was so, you know, my own naivety of how the system is, so much of rehabilitation for Ruth was rooted in so much, almost like keeping her down. Mm -hmm. And is that, why is that method critical to bringing someone back into society through your own, if you've learned that through your own research, why is that like the chosen method to to almost build a person back up with tough love, I guess? Well, um, with Ruth and Vince's relationship in the Unforgivable, I saw him as being like her therapist in a way, not therapist exactly, but therapist in a way that I would give her the gems for survival, but yet I couldn't become too emotionally attached to her because there's that fine line of possibly triggering her to going back into the jail system, whereas I'm trying to keep my recidivism rate low. Um, and it's just like the eagle builds the nest and they keep the thorns there so that the baby eagle can't get too comfortable because after a while, when they get too big, they start getting poked and they got to get their ass out and fly. So it's one of those kind of things ultimately with the PO. Mm -hmm. Sandra, when you, when you reflect, you immerse yourself in a lot of conversations with, with prisoners and people who are unseen. How has this um, experience altered you in any way? Or was this a line of society that you were already immersed in and researching and finding out things about? How has this changed you? I had a line into um, the world of foster care, which is incredibly important to me. Um, how it's set up, how it's, how it's failing, how it's quietly succeeding that no one knows about. My daughter, my search for my daughter was, was through foster care and everything that I've learned. And, and back to what you were saying with, with Rob, you know, the tough love, there was something really heartbreaking and difficult in my classes that I had to take and sort of my being inspected to see if I was a, a, a viable and safe parent for this beautiful creature that just was supposed to come into my life. I didn't know where she was yet, but they asked me the question. They said, what are the worst out of all the abuses? And I was like, how, how do you respond to that? How do you respond to horrific acts against a human being from beginning to end? There are no greater. And they said, neglect. Mm -hmm. Because with all the other abuses, there's a need for that child or that individual to exist. With neglect, that child doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So when you ask Rob about his way of, of seeing Ruth and treating Ruth, he's seeing her. 
he's seeing her, he's acknowledging her shortcomings. He acknowledges what other people see her as, but he sees her. And to me, that was so important um, because he sees the full picture of society, but he also sees who she is and her shortcomings and where she might take herself through sabotage back to prison because she doesn't feel seen by anyone else. So that, that journey I was very immersed in, but having been given the honor of speaking to the extraordinary woman, I, the women I spoke to that were incarcerated and the ones that had subsequently been released, they entrusted me with their stories. And each and every story had the same beginning, which was they were born into poverty with no resources and a society that didn't want to see them. And as a woman, it enraged me and broke my heart that um, even in prison, women are seen as less than, less than even men in prison. And I'm like, what the, you know, what, it just, you're already enraged and trying to make your mark as a woman. And then my journey to find my daughter and then being given this opportunity, I was lucky enough to to listen and be shared um, stories with that I can't unsee. And it's my responsibility to now make stories about people who sacrifice every day and no one, no one makes stories about. Well, I thank you for making this one. It really, really made me think. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. And, um, enjoyed your performances. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent, for your time. I appreciate it. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. For for all the negative things that people say about attorneys, there's always that kind of <laughs> soft spot that somehow people can get in. And in this case, it's Ruth. What is it about Ruth that John is at least willing to entertain the idea of? Well, it's a good question because you know I wondered that myself when I read the script, and 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 I thought. I had to think of a backstory for him so it made sense to me. And, and so I gave him a military background. And, huh. and, and cause I know I wanted to be, I wanted him to be able to recognize her trauma that's cause she was definitely going through something. I mean, there she is in front of the house when she comes in, she's definitely going through something like it's clear. And, um, but she's all the same. She's a kind of mysterious kind of dodgy, character you know so it's it, I, I wanted I thought that it would be a good idea to recognize kind of a P, PTS in, a, in her you know and and that's how I started off and I and that was without knowing that's without my character knowing anything about her that was just the initial empathy that came up you know in, inside of my character and so that's how I that's what I based that part on I like that because well, you don't really, you don't always think empathy when you think of lawyers and yeah. all of their interactions, you could, it was very apparent in the, the chemistry that you and Sandra had together, which is scenes that she had all this emotional weight. And while he didn't spoon feed her the dream, he still did just enough to, yeah. to put her along. And I thought that was really intriguing. Yeah. Then, I'm sorry, go ahead, Vincent. No, I was just going to say, you reminded me of something. I was just going to say that, you know, we can't, I, I know you, you were probably going to get to something like this, but I just want to say that, you know, he was also anchored by Viola's character. You know, she had a very strong opinion in the other way, um, initially. And, and so he, you know, it was important that Viola and I, um, our task, I think, was to, and we talked about it a lot, um, was to achieve an allegiance between the two of us that we were a husband and wife and that we were connected and even in even as we disagree about this particular woman early in the story we had to be connected our the allegiance had to be with her and i biola and myself and and for for me to even be out there given this thinking that this woman needs a second chance that anchor had to be there. Absolutely. I got to thinking about like kind of that fine line when someone does something bad or heinous or, or whatever and what redemption for someone like that looks like. In Ruth's case, it's a very heinous thing that has happened in the past and there is no redemption for her anywhere. 
except sort of with, with John. In your own opinion, you know, what's that line like between forgiving someone who's done their time and just want to move on into the next chapter and try to forget? Yeah, you know, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, it's like, a, you know, who, who is, who deserves empathy and who doesn't, you know, like that's, that's a tough question, man. Like, I'm not sure there's an easy answer there. You know, I, I think that there are lines that we all have, you know, we're all, we all draw lines. Like, there, I mean, right now there's certain trials going on where, you know, you just watch these trials. You can't believe that these people are getting empathy in any way. And, and yet they are. And, 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 and it's, it's just mind boggling. So there's all these different trips when it comes to that, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it comes down, I guess, to it being the, uh, the, the human experience, you know, like we are gonna be challenged, you know, in our, in, the, in our feelings and the way we feel about things and the, and the mistakes that people have made, the mistakes that we've made, the bad choices we've made, the bad choices others have made. I mean, my God, you know, it's tough man it's tough it's not easy i think no it's not i think to form an opinion and then follow through with actually helping somebody out it's a tough choice to make man. it is that's what i like most about this film i thank you for your time it really makes you think where are you willing to mark that line in the sand. Thank you so much. They are yeah, giving me you're welcome. I appreciate talking to you. Yeah, nice to meet you. See ya. Thank you so much, Nora, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is such a, there's so much emotional weight. When I think of all the actors, how they maneuver around each other, Ruth and Katie, there's just weight and it manifests itself in different forms. When you were shaping the look that you wanted of the film, was that your first thought? Is what, what were your initial thoughts of what you wanted to convey in terms of their trauma with each other? Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that Ruth connects them all. You know that it is a big ensemble, and everybody sees Ruth differently. Um, and everybody is differently affected by what she did back then and what happened, that trauma connects them all. And visually, we needed to make sure that we understand the different universes that, you know, the Ingrams, um, Viola and Vincent, you know, that they are the richest family, you know, they made it somewhere, they had to overcome something to be where they are. Whereas, you know, the Malcolms are very kind of protected, more kind of um, suburban family, whereas the Wellens are the ones who struggle most. And it is really important in order to not confuse, wait, who are they if you have a story with so many characters? Mm -hmm. Something that was very interesting to me, I, I just was ignorant of it, is when Ruth's character has to meet with Rob's character for their check-in for probation and how much of their interaction is more him putting her down instead of building her back up with just if you have your own understanding of why that is a method for probation officers talking to former convicts that was interesting to me did you guys talk about that dynamic a lot between the two of them oh yeah and we did a lot of research and we went with parole officers and rob did some research on his own and um we always describe the relationship as a tough love you know, because Ruth also needs boundaries. And if he just tries it with a soft side, you know, he knows that with a person who has been incarcerated for 20 years and, and, and used to have a hard surface in order to survive, he needs to find another tone of saying, you know, almost like a strict dad in terms of, you better listen to me now. You know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I just gotta tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I love the pairing of, of Vincent with Viola, the two Vs, you know, they had a really, really interesting dynamic. It wasn't like, you know, your traditional the hunter gatherer, the stay at home mom, they both had some real equal footing in what was set in their household. What type of 
talking or advice or thing discussions that you have with the two of them about their chemistry on screen and what you wanted them to convey? Well, I mean, both characters are very strong, opinionated, um, incredibly intelligent lawyers. And they both see Ruth very differently. They don't agree at all. <laughs> and that already, when you then have actors like Viola and Vincent by itself already creates a great dynamic because you know you absolutely understand where she's coming from. I mean, that's a murderer that enters the house with her children inside. And her husband, who almost behind her back, you know, just thinks that that woman deserves a second chance. So that dynamic by itself is so rich that then my job if, is really easy. You know, life is easy when you have good actors. I, I hear that. Well, I thank you so much for your time. This was a very, very moving movie. It really affected me. And I thank you for your time to talk about it. Thank you for having me. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.